What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. JP Dividends here bringing you guys another video and today we're going to be taking a look at Altria stock to see if it's a buy, a hold, or a sell. So in this video we're going to go over a few different things starting out with what they do and how they make money. Then we'll take a look at Altria's financials, a quick dividend analysis on Seeking Alpha, and finally we'll take a look at their valuation to see what is the intrinsic value of this stock. So what are your thoughts on Altria stock? Comment down below. And if you enjoy the video drop a like down below and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Also, feel free to recommend any dividend stocks that you'd like me to analyze. I'd be more than happy to. Alrighty, so what does Altria do to make money? If you've never heard of this company, they are basically a massive tobacco company. I think in the past five to 10 years, they've started getting a little bit more into the cannabis industry, but for the most part, they are very well known for tobacco. So as you can see here, this is a breakdown of like basically their tobacco products, their non-combustible tobacco brands and investments, and then some of their complementary assets. The main one that I have known them for is that they own marble. So that is a massive cigarette company. They also own Black and Mild, and it does seem like they have other cigarette companies in their portfolio. And then in regards to non-combustible tobacco, so Copenhagen, this is like chewing tobacco. I'm not sure what IQOS is. Juul is basically a vape company that was super big in like 2018, and then they got a bunch of their flavors like banned, so they've kind of fallen off. This was actually a rough investment for Altria. And then on, it looks like, is oral nicotine pouches. I think it's something, if you've ever seen what is, Zen is. I think it's something similar to that, but basically all you have to know is that they own a bunch of tobacco products or nicotine based products. So that is how Altria makes its money. Now jumping into a breakdown of their revenue, as you can see here, it looks like their revenue is trending up pretty nicely from 2009 all the way up until about 2021. But since this peak in 2021, they've gone from 26 point, just about 26.4 billion and trailing 12 month revenue all the way down to 24 billion. So it's actually as steep as this may look, it's actually not that big of a drop on a percentage basis, but it is pretty consistently going down since 2021, which is not good to see. And if you look here, as you can see, 24 billion versus they were at 23 billion back in 2012. So their revenue is basically at the same point that it was over a decade ago. So in regards to the revenue, they are definitely not checking this box off. If this was back in 2021, then yeah, I would say they do, but that's just not the case, especially with this downtrend that we've seen the past three years. Now, taking a look at their net income, I would say that this is a very gradual and steady increase up into the right. It's very subtle. It's not like very noticeable. So as you can see here, it goes from 3.2 billion in 2009 to looks like 5 billion in 2015. Then they have a couple of years where it shoots up a bit and then it drops Then it goes back to four and a half billion in 2021. And now it's currently sitting at 10 billion. So it does seem like the net income the past few years has done pretty good despite the revenue going down. So what that means is like, let's say their revenue drops 5% year over year their expenses are dropping by more than 5% year over year, which helps them create this increasing net income. So I would say in regards to the net income, they do check off this box, although it's not a very obvious trend up into the right. And you got a couple of kind of weird years here from 2016 to it looks like 2020. But if you were to ignore this middle section here, it is very steadily going up into the right. And they basically doubled their net income since 2016. Now jumping into Altria's free cash flow, this is actually the most impressive part of their financials is the fact that they have a growing free cash cash flow despite having negative revenue growth. And you might be asking, how is that possible? It looks like the main way that this is possible is that a company can have declining revenue, but growing free cash flow if it has high depreciation and amortization expenses, which are non-cash expenses that reduce net income, but don't affect the cash on hand. So the free cash flow is, they're definitely checking this box off. I mean, you'd think that this is a stock like Visa or a tech company. I mean, that's very steadily going up into the right, looking really good on the free cash flow growth side of things. And then jumping into Yahoo Finance here, taking a look at their PE ratio, sitting at 8.64. So they do have a very low valuation in regards to the PE. This is one of the few companies that I've seen that has a PE below 10, especially in this market that we're in right now. It seems like most companies are sitting between 20 and 30, but it is a very large you know, tobacco company. It's been around for decades. It's not like it's some new growth stock that just IPO'd a couple years back. So it does make sense that they are gonna have a low or PE, but 8.64 is very low. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But jumping into the profit margin here, their net profit margin is 50%, which is very good. That's pretty impressive. I think part of the reason for that though, is if you don't know how to calculate this, you basically just take the net income divided by the revenue. I think the main reason for this is kind of like what I said earlier is that, you know, if revenue drops 5%, their expenses are dropping by more than 5%, which can make the profit margin look very favorable. So I would take this somewhat with a grain of salt, because like 
like we saw earlier, the revenue is downtrending quite a bit, but the net income is not, which is also going to increase the margin there. So that's interesting to see though. 50%, very interesting. And then the ROA is at 20%. That looks great. The ROE is saying not applicable. That's probably because they have negative shareholders equity. So I would say in regards to the net profit margin, I would just kind of ignore this because I do think it's getting skewed by the fact that revenue has dropped quite a bit, yet net income is not. Um, but I mean, regardless, it is good to see a very high profit margin. But the ROA, I'd say they check this box off and the ROE, they do not. And then jumping into their dividend stats here, this is one of the main reasons people love Altria stock is they have a dividend yield of 8.14%. Looks like their payout ratio here is 79.67%. Their five-year dividend growth rate is 4.1% and they've been growing their dividend for 54 years. So the dividend yield looks really good. Let's look at what the average yield has been over the past couple of years. So it looks like since 2020, they've been sitting around a seven to eight percent yield, which could be a good thing or it could not. This kind of tells you that their stock price has either sat flat or decreased. So year to date, their stock price looks great. The five year return, it's basically around the same as the year to date return. So it looks like, you know, if you bought them five years ago, the five year returns only at 20 percent. The all time returns really good, but they also IPO'd in 1984. So, I mean, it looks like they peaked in about 2017. And since then, they are actually actually down about 30%. So in about a seven year period, they have dropped 30%. This does not include dividends reinvested though. If you were to briefly take a look at Altria versus the S&P 500 over the past 10 years, they are profitable with dividends reinvested. So that's good. But their average annual return is 7.3%. The market's at 13.29%. So they are underperforming the market by about 50%, like you can see here. But going back to the dividend, very high yield, which is good to see. One thing I did want to look at is their dividend safety. So if we look at the cash flow payout ratio, that that is actually at 73.91%. That's kind of high. It's not alarmingly high, but they're getting into the area where I feel like anything 80 plus percent, you, I'm not going to say you may want to stay away from, but you want to keep your eyes very close on that because if they have a couple of years of free cash flow either sitting flat while they keep increasing the dividend or free cash flow start to shrink, they may get into a position where they have to cut the dividend. And the reason for this is because this formula takes the dividends per share and divides it by the free cash flow per share. And so if the free cash flow per share is not increasing, but the dividend is, this can slowly increase over time to the point where they can't pay out their dividend. And also one thing you want to think about is a company that has a high cash flow payout ratio is not going to be growing their dividend that much. Like what we saw earlier, they're only growing it at about 4% a year, which is still above the rate of inflation long-term, but you're probably not going to see any years where Altria is growing the dividend 10, 15, 20% by any means, but it's definitely more of the category of a high yielding stock with that low dividend growth rate and a really good dividend growth history. We got to acknowledge that too. So that's the dividend analysis. Now taking a look at the DCF model valuation. So my DCF model has Altria at $112 per share. Simply Wall Street's at $126 per share. And they're currently trading at $50 per share. So if you take that average, that gives them 138% upside. And the reason for this is because both of these models are looking at free cash flow growth. And like what we saw earlier, they have very good free cash flow growth. So when you have a company trading at a low valuation, you know, with an 8 PE, but the free cash flow is growing growing, then of course the DCF model is going to look very favorable, but still very good to see here. So overall, my take on Altria stock is that it could be a good buy right now, depending on your investing goal. I feel like for somebody who is in their 20s or 30s, it doesn't really make much sense to be buying this stock because the capital appreciation is very limited on it. And the dividend safety is somewhat riskier than a lot of other companies. And I do think that while smoking in the US is decreasing, I think globally it's still growing. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but it's also still stock that's like completely killing off all of their most loyal people. Like if somebody's smoking a pack a day, they're way more likely to die at a younger age and not be able to buy your products anymore. And yeah, you could argue that with like McDonald's or like, you know, fast food places, but I feel like there's a massive difference between getting a McDouble once in a while and then having a full on cigarette addiction where you're chain smoking tons of cigarettes all day long. And so I do think that poses a huge risk to the company is like, you're literally just killing off your most loyal customers. That's not necessarily the best business model. But, but like what we saw earlier, tobacco has been around for a super long time. And like I said, just now, I don't think it's going anywhere on a global level. So I would say for a younger investor who's looking more for total return and dividend growth, I would not touch Altria stock. And I'm also not a huge fan of the decreasing revenue because that just raises nothing but red flags to me. But I will say that if you're an older investor who's maybe kind of getting around retirement age and you're looking for a higher yielding stock, this could be a good play for you if you are bullish on tobacco in the
the long run. But like I mentioned before, with the dividend being a little bit risky, I would not make this position more than 5% of your portfolio due to some of those risks that we've seen with the decreasing revenue, the high payout ratio, as well as them having kind of a low dividend growth rate. So it's definitely more the higher yielder side of things. Although I do got to admit that free cash flow growth is very impressive. So that is my take on Altria stock. It really just depends on what your goals are. You know, if you're looking for a higher yielder, if you think tobacco is going to continue to do well in the long term, you probably want to buy this stock, but make sure to keep a close eye on that free cash flow payout ratio because you don't want to buy them for the high yield, and then five years from now, they cut their dividend entirely because they had a couple of bad years. So that's just my take on Altria stock. What are your thoughts on this company? Comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.